to thank you for taking time to speak with me today. Sorry? I wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me today. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to it. And congratulations on Anthem of the Night. It's a great album. Thanks. How was the recording process for you? Uh, truly, it was pretty smooth. Uh, we were kind of scared if it would all be possible uh, during the pandemic, of course, um, but uh, we made it happen. We worked a lot on the pre-production of it. Uh, the music was very prepared, so whenever we entered in the studio, we could straight away start. Uh, we flew to Madrid, Spain, so that's quite a distance. Uh, to get this done together with a uh, producer Alejandro Gabasa, which is a very good friend of mine who really understands um, the concept of the band and the and the sound that we want to aim to to have with the band. So uh, it was nothing but smooth. Uh, we recorded the EP in uh, seven days total, and um, he mixed and mastered it too, Alejandro. And uh, yeah, that's what we did, and that's how Anthems of the Night was created. The album has a great uh, feel to it, almost. Uh gives me an 80s feel um, with uh, great guitar work and the, the vocals are superb on the album. I mean, um, that's good that you hear it because 80s is what we're trying um, to, um, we, we're trying to give it the sound of the 80s. I mean, uh, the 80s is a, it's a decade that really inspires me. I love the artists coming from that time. Uh, it's like the biggest influence on me. So uh, it's obviously uh, revi re revibrates in Cobra Spell. Uh, not only in the music, but also in the aesthetic of uh, the band overall, the logo and everything is just like our passion to create this kind of music that gives you this feeling of nostalgia, kind of. And uh, speaking of the bands that influenced you, what are some bands that influenced you? Uh, for example, Kiss, which is uh, my favorite band ever. Uh, Doc and Rat, uh, Whitesnake, X Japan. Uh, the list goes on. There is a lot of artists that uh, inspire me. Uh, also Wasp. Um, I, I could name a lot of them, but th those would be the main influences of the band. Judas Priest also. Yeah. And uh, how does the video shoot scope for the two videos? Very fun, actually. We squeezed them both in a weekend, meaning that we just took two days to record both of them. It was very well planned. We tried to squeeze it all. Uh, the first day we did Addicted to the Night in a studio in Antwerpen, which is in Belgium. And uh, they were super uh, good with understanding what we wanted to reach with the video, like how we wanted to um, make it look. They really understood the aesthetic, uh, the whole uh, feel of the video, and that made me very happy. Um, so this is um, obviously what became Addicted to the Night. Then the second music video, we did The Midnight Hour and we recorded it in an abandoned uh, uh, factory, um, which looks awesome though for a location to play a music video in and, and also in a bar. So we did two locations instead of just one. And this one was very fun. Like everyone in the band got a little bit drunk. So that was kind of funny to experience. Like it kind of uh, was pretty rock and roll, so <laughs> it was a busy weekend, a very productive weekend, but I'm very proud of what we uh, made together, yeah. The Midnight Hour is my favorite track on the album. I love the lead guitar work in it. I love the dirty rhythm of the song. Thank I you. Want, I wanted to know if you could pick your favorite song off the EP, what would it be and why? I think my favorite would be uh, Addicted to the Night. Certainly, um, I don't know why the fastest songs of the album, I mean, I, I'm not sure if uh, uh, Celebrate or Addicted to the Night was faster, but usually the faster ones are the ones that for me are the most spontaneous to compose. I always had a very easy, um, easy process while writing a, a fast song. And uh, this was the this was also with Addicted to the Night. It came in very spontaneously. Uh, we finished the song in like one or two hours, like it was there very soon. So uh, whenever I have this feeling with a song, somehow it becomes my favorite one and it turns out to be the single. And I think that's why it's my favorite. It's very melodic, it has a lot of leads, it's pretty dynamic. It has some some key changes, something that I uh, usually don't implement that much on songs. And I, I'm really happy about it, how it turned out. Yeah, and it has an epic bass solo by Angelina. So, yeah. And uh, speaking of the EP, um, being in 18 minutes of length, the main problem was it with it is that it made you want more and more. Um, <laughs> is, there, is there a uh, full album in the works? Well, we do have enough songs for an album. 
the reason why we released an EP is because we are an independent band, meaning that we are financing everything ourselves with the support of the, the people that support our music and buy our music and are there for us. So um, to release an album with great production, with uh, what we are trying uh, to aim as for the quality that we want to deliver, uh, would be kind of unrealistic with the budget that we can uh, have for it. So we had to kind of limit ourselves into uh, to uh, release an EP. And I mean, it's what we want. We, we prefer to uh, release quality over quantity. And who knows, maybe in the near future or anytime soon, maybe there is a label coming with a good offer that could offer more than what we can do independently. And then I'll definitely consider uh, releasing an album, which I mean, as I said, I have material for that. We have songs. But uh, we have to see when is the right time for the band to put it out. And also, I wanted to ask you, are there any road plans at the time? Uh, touring, you mean? Yes. Yeah, we do have a lot of shows at the moment just in Europe. So um, we have a lot of, uh, we, we have in two weeks a tour in Spain, 11 days with Ross the Boss, uh, who is the ex-guitar player of Manowar. Uh, we have also a tour uh, around Europe, a, uh, a few countries together with Enforcer and let me see, Evil Invaders. We have uh, a few other shows here and there in Europe. Uh, in the UK, we also have a festival. Um, yeah, we, we have a couple. Um, to see which uh, dates we're playing, I would recommend to go in bands in town and then search for Cobra Spell. And then there's a huge list of all the shows that we will be playing and also a link to the tickets. Uh, we are surely hoping to uh, play different continents very soon, who knows? We're really trying to get out there. And I wanted to ask you, uh, as far as your guitar playing, um, what kind of studies did you do in guitar or did you just pick up and learn on your own? I am self-taught when it comes to guitar. So I uh, learned myself how to play guitar. Um, later on in my career, I started asking some guitarists for advice. So I did take some lessons on the road and the run whenever I was running into issues. Like um, I've been changing my technique a lot of times because as I said, I'm self-taught. So I run into a lot of issues as for, oh, why can't I do this thing? So I just went to someone and asked, hey, can you help me with that? So um, yeah, but honestly, yeah, I have learned most of it in my own room here, so. And I wanted to ask you as well, if you could pick your proudest moment as an artist, what would it be? I think uh, my proudest moment is releasing uh, this EP um, and playing Wacken. So I played this huge festival three years or four years ago already um, with Burning Witches, my previous band. That was a very, very happy moment. Uh, certainly because it was one of my main dreams as a musician. It's a very big German festival that with a huge audience. And um, yes, yeah, so the second one, of course, uh, releasing music with my band is something very fulfilling and makes me very happy. And can you tell me, uh, give me a brief history of the band and how it all came together? Um, Cobra honestly started as a side project. Uh, I wanted to start a band that brought back those 80s bands that don't exist anymore. Um, most of them that exist are already like old, uh, you know, Motley Crue, uh, Def Leppard, they're all like, they're old guys, nothing wrong with that. I mean, they, they, they are still there and I'm happy that I can still see them live. But uh, we need more young blood. We need young people to play this kind of music, to revive it, to hopefully bring it back. And I thought, I felt like that was my task to do so with Cover Spell and hopefully trying to um, bring back those 80s music in the most authentic way, but with a little more than package. So it's still um, digestible in these days. Um, and this is what we are trying to do. Um, I just try to pay homage to those artists that inspire me. Um, obviously, we're not doing something new. We are not creating a new genre. We're not writing music that sounds like something new, though uh, we are trying to um, make, I mean, I'm trying to make music that's just makes you feel like you're back in the 80s. Even though I've never lived that time, I want to feel like I'm living in that time. So that's my way of time traveling. Well, I want to go back and live that time again. <laughs> yeah, but you did, probably. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, I want to ask you as well, uh, if you could tell me what's the best advice you've been giving along the way? Um, wow, that's a very good question. 
I kind of have to uh, think about it, but I think choose for myself. I think this is something that I have uh, really underestimated through my career, and it was to also choose for what I want. And I'm starting to understand why that advice is so important. Because, I mean, it's important to uh, try to care about our own happiness and try to see what we want to do out of our own life. And I think it's a very good advice to start caring about ourselves and to listen to ourselves and see what do you want. And yeah. Sure, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, uh, last thing you do before you go to sleep is actually reflect on a day and ask what. I always ask myself, well, what could I have done better today so I can make a better tomorrow? Exactly. Well, that's amazing. Now, that's very good that you do that. I mean, I do the same thing. And I wanted to ask you, um, what can fans look for next? What? What can fans look for next? Uh, what bands can look for next? Fans. Your fans. What can uh -huh. they look for? <laughs> Uh, what they can book for or look for. I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, what can they look for? Uh, what's coming next from the band? Will it be uh -huh. the Yes, so as I, as I mentioned, we are going to get out there and play a lot of shows in Europe. Uh, we just released our EP. Uh, we just released two music videos. So we have that done. Now it's um, our chance to get out there. The pandemic is gone. So we really want to get on stage and play and book as much as we can. So we're working very hard on getting the band um, anywhere we can. And uh, so that's that's what we're currently working on. Yeah. And uh, in your spare time beyond music, do you have any hobbies that you're into? Well, um, Pretty much everything that I do is music related at this point. Um, I give guitar lessons to uh, to a lot of people online, so like with Skype. And uh, I do enjoy, well, I mean, I do uh, Kung Fu at the moment. Uh, I don't have much time for it at the moment, but I enjoy doing Kung Fu. Um, I like drawing. I like uh, doing my own makeup, something that I enjoy doing. Um, though my biggest passion is like guitar playing, so that stays like on top. And aside of that, I just love uh, doing stuff for my band. Like I, I just love be staying busy, um, getting my band uh, busy, trying to do things for the band, trying to manage things for the band, booking, anything that I can do. I just love doing that. And uh, as far as equipment, what's your favorite, what equipment is usually your go-to? Well, um, most people that might have seen me, uh, they have seen me playing a Warrior a Jackson. That's the only guitars that I play. I, I just um, love the Warrior shape. I'm really obsessed with it, as you might be able to see. My room is just covered with these guitars. Um, they, they just are my go-to uh, choice when it comes to guitars. Jackson makes just very good, reliable guitars that I uh, just love. I'm, I cannot play anything else. As for amplifiers um, at home to record stuff, I use my Kemper, which is a profiling amp. Um, it's a very easy um, amplifier to use uh, when you want to record in the studio or when you want to play in a concert. It's very versatile. You can have every single sound out there. As for tube amplifiers, you can see mine here is the EVH 5150 is my go to uh, choice. If I don't use my own Kemper, I will use this one. And it's only in case uh, in my band, if I would play only with tubes, then I'll play with this one. But my other guitar player plays the Kemper too, so we'd like to keep it like uh, the same. Um, and as for my pickups on my guitar, I'm using EMGs, EMG 81 and 85. Um, I like the sound, it's tight, and it's exactly what I want with my play, uh, playing uh, ton. It's what I like. And strings, I use Daydario's. I'm thinking what else, um, what else am I using? Oh yeah, if I have effects with my tube amplifier, I use a Boss GT1000, which is like an effects pedal, very versatile too. You can get a lot of cool effects with it. So that, that will be kind of like my go-to gear choice, yeah. And uh, what's the best way to get merchandise from Cobra Spell? Uh, to get merchandise from us, you can go to www cobraspell.com so it's just the name of the band.com and then you're straight away arrive at the merchandise shop we ship 
uh, worldwide. So um, the, the shop is uh, settled in the Netherlands, though we ship everywhere. So even if you're in the United States or in Japan or Australia, we will ship there. And lastly, I wanted to ask you if you could give a message to your fans, what would that message be? Well, firstly, uh, I would say thank you if you're listening to this right now and still out there. So <laughs> thanks for that. Um, I want to thank you all for the support because I never expected Cobra Spell that started as a side project to come this far and to be um, have so much uh, positive press and reactions. I didn't expect that. So I want to thank you for the bottom of the heart, my heart to making it happen. And yeah, it's just I can only express my uh, my thankfulness for it. And we're really trying to get out there. We are starting to book a lot of shows. You'll hear definitely more of us because we're really pushing it at the moment, really pushing ourselves to the limits. And uh, yeah, let's spread some 80s, uh, some heavy rock together. And yeah, let's rock. Well, I think you guys have done an excellent job with it. And I look forward to, as I said, more and more from the band. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time to ask me these questions and for making this interview uh, and hopefully for next time too. Absolutely, and thank you. And you have a great rest of your day. You too. Have a Bye. nice week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.